Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sonia from Zeus, uh, and I will be talking about something that's more of um, our particular use case. And, and actually, this is a really good contrast, I think, to Vivian's presentation, because we are kind of one of the, the users of the um, you know, kind of off-the-shelf, open source-ish uh, fire offerings. Um, and then, and I, I also really appreciate the previous two presentations, because I think I relate a ton to to Nikolai's uh, experience with search. Um, uh, this, this topic is about search being very slow, right? Um, and and I, uh, I, I wish we could talk about all the things that, that Zeus is doing um, also in terms of like trying to merge different resources. That's also a very exciting topic, but I'm going to limit this to what my team has been doing, which has been um, mostly benchmarking performance on search and then trying to find ways to improve it. Uh, because uh, one of our, very um, sort of uh, one of the use cases that we want to satisfy immediately is kind of the patient facing application. And um, so today what I'm going to be talking about is like how, how we benchmarked the search request. And then what we kind of discovered about, you know, is search even really useful for what the, what our, uh, our customer facing apps want. And, and then sort of how we ended up, uh, how we're ending up trying to solve this, which actually is, is very relevant to the sort of monolithic um, problem that, that Vivian just talked about. Um, so for benchmarking, we spent three months just writing benchmarks and just benchmarking search requests. I mean, lots of requests, but mainly search. Um, we wanted to, uh, you know, we, we basically wanted to figure out if our existing fire service would scale well with if we increase the number of uh, patients on our system. And then, and then we thought that what we would do was like, oh, we would find out some bottlenecks and then we would fix them. Um, and so we went ahead and did that. We, uh, we use Gatling as, as, our, as our test suite. Um, I know that there, there are a lot of benchmarking tools out there for fire servers. Um, a lot of them are built upon Locust, I think, which is Python based. Um, we selected Gatling mainly because there's, Gatling has a very nice sort of uh, DSL that allows you to control the, the user, like, concurrent user traffic, and then you can ramp it up and down. And then also each user session has a very specific, um, you can you can define a session with a certain number of requests and you can build requests upon what came back previously. And so it's a very good way of simulating actual users. Um, and so our, our server is, uh, our main fire server is built on Smile CDR, which of course is a commercial offering of Happy. Um, our, uh, our database is, is Postgres, um, and what we built on top of, we chose Smile CDR basically because we could add a whole bunch of customization in terms of access control. Um, Zeus has this access control paradigm where we want to allow anyone with a treatment relationship to the patient to see all the data associated with a patient regardless of, what, of where it came from. Um, and then we also, We've also been adding a lot of, uh, we use tags like meta, fire meta tags to kind of categorize resources that come in so we can have different views of, um, of, of your, your patient data. So you could see, like, if you only wanna see your patient data that came from a third party, you can use a tag to see that. Or if you only, it, we have an offering called Lens, which is kind of kind of Zeus's solution to, to the whole, um, you know, deduplication, uh, you know, merging of resources. So if you only want to see the lens view, you can also use tags to see that. Um, so here is just a chart of um, the, the benchmark results that we got from, from running the same perform the, the same suite over, over a long time. Um, when, and then this is, we're, we're using sort of, we were generating sort of Cynthia data for patients. And so each patient has 500 to 1,000 resources associated with them. So um, if you have 10K patients, you basically have like, like 5, mil 5 million, I think 5 million to 10 million resources. And at 100K patients, you have 50 to 100 million uh, resources. Um, we, of course, tried, these, these are all on AWS. We tried out different um, sizes of, uh, of Postgres. And, and the, the, the thing that we were most concerned about was the, um, the search time because our our patient facing apps are mostly doing search requests. Um, they're doing some they're doing some uh, writes, but the I think 
our the feedback that we got was that writes um, sort of the performance of writes was was less concerning than searches because when you write like you submit a form and then the patient kind of expects to wait a little bit but for searches they they kind of want the the application to be pretty snappy and so we were noticing that at at some point when we were at 100k patients even as we increased the database size we were not getting a whole lot of benefit um, on our on the average search performance um i think yeah the, the types of searches that we had were we were mixing them up so we actually had some that were pretty simple it was just like you know we all of these are patient uh, oriented searches so we already have we're already passing the patient id but then we put in some other parameters like we want encounters at a certain date um or if we want sort of non-patient oriented queries like for example if i if i'm a provider and then I have a whole bunch of patients in, in my sample and I want to get all of them um, with a certain uh, criteria that, that was also something we included in the mix. Um, and I think there were we also tend to use a lot of chain parameters because we want to search on identifiers a lot. So that's the type of searches in our mix that led to uh, this kind of result. Um, so Another thing that we we kind of learned during this process when we talked to the uh, our, our sort of downstream applications was we, we were noticing that they did a little, whole lot of pagination. Um, and then and one of the reasons our fire server would become slower was just because there was so much load on it. Um, so we wanted to understand why people were making so many requests, like particularly pagination, because I think pagination is kind of not a great use of an API. Um, and so it turns out there are, uh, you know, FIRE has these search parameters that allow you to filter down your data, but there, there are search parameters that did not exist. And you can, we can create custom search parameters sometimes, but sometimes they want things that are just not there. Like, for example, um, it, I don't think FIRE allows you to search like a very, a very broad type of OR query. Like, I, I can't search for the like date is something or the name is something. Um, and people there, people were writing applications where they wanted that kind of functionality. So what they would do is they would they would grab all of that resource, paginate through everything, and then run the or queries locally on, on the front end. Um, there's also some issues with sort. I think when uh, when you try to sort on the name, but the but patients have like a lot of names. Um, the sort of results tend to be a little bit unpredictable. Um, I think I think Nikolai also alluded to the fact that like the sort parameters and search parameters maybe should be decoupled because the way they act is a little bit, um, you know, it's kind of awkward. Um, and so what what was happening was we also had applications where they didn't like how the fire server sorted things, so they would grab all the resources and then sort them locally. Um, so all of this activity was. Was at, was causing a lot of load on our server, um, and and then again I said that Zeus uses the uses meta tags a lot to um, to sort of classify data, and we had a lot of services where they were searching by tag, which is fine, but they were also searching by not tag, and and in our database this translates into a not in um, SQL query, and not in is a very inefficient query. So people are also experiencing, there's currently still experiencing a lot of um, a lot of queries where they ask for tag not and then the the request takes like five seconds. Um, so we were learning from a lot of our downstream apps that like fire search is just very awkward and they had to do all this work on their end. Um, and so even if we make our searches very, very fast, they still have to do a whole bunch of work. Um, so we we were we were starting to think of how we could solve their problem, like maybe without having them use the the REST API, because the REST API maybe isn't the best fit for their their use case. Um, so we looked at the GraphQL spec, which GraphQL solves some of their problems. Um, I think one of the one of the things that was difficult about um, about the REST API is, well, I guess one thing is that. It, with GraphQL, you just get the particular fields you want back, so you're not forced to always get the meta and the um, some of the some of the mandatory fields that are returned. Um, another thing that our apps were having trouble with was they would they would use an include 
query. So they would get like um, maybe a patient and then include all of their encounters. But then once they get that that full response back, they still have to manually relate everything to each other. Whereas in GraphQL, you can um, you can just put the includes in in the sort of in place in line. Um, so that was helpful for them. Um, so we were starting to look at GraphQL as a solution. And what we ended up doing is that because GraphQL is, is like a GraphQL service is something that we could actually kind of build on the side um, and, and then sort of, uh, we wanted to also tailor the GraphQL API experience to, um, to, to better fit the, our, uh, our downstream users' needs. Um, and we understand that the Fire GraphQL scheme is still evolving. So we kind of took a little bit of liberties to design our own. Um, for example, we are doing more decoupling of sort and search parameters. Um, so we are building a service called the Fast Query Service. Um, it's we're inspired by the Fire GraphQL schema, but we're also making our own um, changes to to satisfy what what we think will be better for our users. Um, so a lot of the you know we're we're taking feedback from our downstream users to to basically address the pain points that were very salient when they're using the REST API. Um, so this is just the, the start of us starting to um, deem uh, sort of un monolith our, our architecture. Um, so the, we are kind of targeting the, the read part of this. The fast query service right now is a read only service. And we're imagining that other things will um, we'll, we'll build other services that kind of consume from the same fire chain stream. And so the fire service right now is, is still the primary ingestion point of all data. Um, we imagine that there might be, you know, for example, um, analytics use cases where they would benefit from a chain stream and then and they could they could have their own traffic so it's not on the on the um, the monolithic fire service. Um, and we're also starting to look at sort of the ingestion part of it, which I think is very relevant to what Vivian was talking about earlier. Um, so this is just like where we're at. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Thank you, Sonia. Um, yeah, there are questions. I think not all of them uh, we probably can address right now. Uh, so first of all, uh, there are questions. Uh, audience is looking for you to share back. Uh, George is asking, will you share back uh, lessons learned uh, uh, with your customized graph GraphQL scheme uh, so that Fire can improve the core definitions? Uh, Nikolai is asking if you can share uh, performance tests. Uh, uh, Martin is asking, uh, will the missing search options uh, parameters missing from the Fire spec or just from the server implementation? Can you add more about that? Uh, sure. So I guess on on the search parameters, um, if they're missing from the fire spec, you can you can define your own search parameters in fire. So we have been doing that. Uh, but there were some there there's some functionality that people are asking for where we we just we simply can't find a way for the for the fire spec to support it. Um, for example, there's the the ors that between unrelated parameters. Um, and there, there's also some very specific ones, like people want to search for, um, I think it's like medication administrations where the type of the information source is something. And I don't think FHIR has a way to, to specify that. Um, we couldn't even find a way to, to do that in FHIR path. Uh, and you guys asking, how do we want to implement fast query service? I, I mean, what database do you want to use or how you, why you think you can do it better than uh, Happy? Oh, oh, I, I didn't talk at all about the fast query service architecture. So we are, we're actually using DynamoDB. Uh, we just stick all of the fire resources in DynamoDB. They're, they're, uh, the partition key is just the, the ID of the resource. Um, and then we have we have other secondary indexes based on on the the use case of, of what of, of how people want to query. And so there are, right now our primary use case is kind of it's is patient oriented. So we have the patient. Um, sort of, we have a universal patient identifier that I that work that can be associated with multiple patient resources. 
So this is like, if we want to deduplicate the patient, we, we just assign the same identifier. So that is like one of the partition keys for, for our, um, one of the indexes that we're using. Um, and that turns out to be very fast. Like, and I think one great thing about DynamoDB is if you select your, um, if you select a really good partition key, then, then it's like completely insensitive to the number of patients. Cause we've been like adding more and more patients and the request times are like, they don't change at all. So um, that's been the main architectural change that allows the, the query service to be fast. But it's also very, it also means that we can only serve a very limited um, type of use case. And that's why if we wanna serve other use cases, we're gonna have to um, build different services off of the same change stream. What means fast for you, Sonia? So what, what, what response is acceptable for you? Um, so for searches, I think we're still actually trying to improve our, our search performance. Um, we were hoping to get everything under 100 milliseconds, just uh, you know, not accounting for network speed. Um, and then, and then for sort of the for for sort of get by ID things, those should be like really like you know, 20 20 milliseconds. And do you think to share your performance tests with the community so other um, can try? optimize your request yeah so the well we can try to package up our gatling tests um we have we have a lot of custom like auth authentication code written in there but uh just the 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 core gatling tests we should we we probably can try to package up yeah that's very interesting so i i think if we will give this open source tooling to test fire servers that would be nice from real users oh yeah on the on the graphql schema i think when we when we have a we're, we're really still all like kind of trying to it's it's still work in progress um i think it, the early results are promising but when we know more i think it would probably be good for us to share that with the community having a more powerful server uh i don't know if that if that's about the fire service but definitely like that throwing money at the infrastructure is always a way to to get a little bit better. But I think one thing we were starting to observe with um, with the our happy server was just the the structure of the database. I think was a little bit limiting because like they the, there's there's so many indexes and then and then it's getting to a point where every everything you write just like adds a huge amount of index um, and then everything you search is like all coming from the same table. Um, and then a, the bigger your tables are, the the slower the joins are going to be. So I, we were kind of forecasting bottlenecks in that area. 